Hello YouTube! This is Loyal to Law once again, and this time in this video, I'll be demonstrating to you the uh, third part of doing the hip rotations. Now, this demonstration is going to be for the intermediate to the advanced, and so for those of you who haven't fully grasped the full concept of the hip rotations yet, especially for beginners, I strongly suggest to you to uh, please watch the first two parts of the hip rotation videos that I made which I'm going to place the links wherever the description box is. And I'll also be placing the link of the video that uh, strongly inspired me in expounding um, this area. And so, without further ado, let's begin. First off, you need three things in doing this kind of exercise. And um, first part is having space, of course, which is obvious. Second part is having a towel, which is this length. Not a bath towel, not a hand towel, which will be too small, the bath towel being too big. Um, this kind of towel, where <clears throat> it's uh, long enough for you to have the towel hang loosely around your neck, like, to, like so. And the thor third part, as you've noticed, is a rubber band, which you can tie on either end of the towel. And the reason being is you want to have somewhat of a loose grip um, on holding the towel between your index finger and your thumb like so and you'll be wasting a whole lot of energy if you're going to always hold the towel like this so you want to always <coughs> um, hold the towel loosely like this which is way better than doing this and trust me you really you need somewhat of more energy in doing this um, hip rotation exercise. Now this doesn't only let you um, exercise doing hip rotations and really working out the core or the ab muscles here <clears throat> as an athlete, but it also lets you um, understand and listen more and be in tune more to your body, especially when you're just concentrating on doing hip rotations and it also helps you understand that most of the punches or most of the kicks that you do really don't come from the power of your hand or the power of your shoulders or the wrist or the power of your leg, the knee and <clears throat> but mainly from the power of your midsection or the torso from the hip going up to your shoulders right here so first thing that you need to do is to be in a bladed stance because this is go uh, the bladed stance or the fighting stance is needed as you can see I begin dressed goofy like from the past hip rotation videos it's needed in order for you to do uh, this type of uh, hip rotation exercise because before from the first two videos we're practicing or really listening to how we do the hips correctly and warming them up taking the full concept of it, now we're going to directly apply it. So the bladed stance or the fighting stance, if you're not uh, familiar with it yet, is either taking a foot forward or taking a step back, and in my case I'm going to take a foot, my foot forward, and then turn my body 45 degrees, so that'll be my entire body at least 45 degrees, but no more than 45 degrees. and my eyes are still facing you and my hands will be <coughs> close to my face. I'm going to lift my hands up, trying to cover my face. As I lower myself here, this is what it's going to do. It, this is what the fighting stance should be. Your hands might be in this motion or might be really close to your face, might be like a Muay Thai style. But the concept is to have your hands close to your face. So as I do inside you here, I may take a step forward or a step back. In this case, I'm going to take a step back. Turn my body 45 degrees. My eyes are still in front of me. Then I raise my hands up to protect my face. All right, so. Now from this fighting stance, your back hand, which is your power hand supposed to be, is where you place your towel. So your back hand holds a towel in this type of um, holding. You just hold it loosely, you really don't have to grip it because you're wasting a whole lot of energy in doing so. You're just going to let it almost hang 
between the space on their index finger and your thumb. And then from here, you're going to do this motion. Kind of like sweating a fly. As I do it here inside you. You may choose to have your towel uh, placed on your back or hang, hang it loosely on, on your hand, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're doing this motion. Now, in concept, you're just going, you're, as I demonstrated a while ago, you're just using your arm, which is your strong hand, and swinging the towel so it will reach your back. And the target that you want to hit on the part of your back is this part where um, between, well, within the waistline, actually, from, of your pants. So it's in this part. If at times it hits your back, then the next part would be a bit difficult because it'll be really, really painful if you're going to, if you're just hitting the your back part. So it needs to hit on the waistline of your pants. Yeah. See this reason why it's a bit intermediate and advanced. And um, what does that have to do with doing hip rotations? Now, in concept, you're just doing this. Which is swinging your arms. You may want to move your hip to get a more rotation to it. As, to, as opposed to using your arm, which is totally different, with the hip, arm, but in reality, this is what you need to practice for. See, as I do it again, side view. This is the concept, trying to hit the middle part of the back of your waistline and this is the real deal. So, as I let loose with the towel here. Now the key point in doing that is to really understand and fully, should I say, imagine on watching your hip rotation inside your head, if you really get what I mean. So basically, you're just getting in tune or listening to the motion of your body. <clears throat> so instead of concentrating on doing the arm or concentrating on doing a straight punch, for example, it really lets your mind off from thinking of doing a punch with your hand because you're seeing it as opposed to really concentrating on the body mechanics which makes you punch better or if you're going to do a hook to replicate what I just did with a towel instead of letting you think of doing a punch because you're just using the hand using the hip Now the key part in doing is the pivoting and <clears throat> a whole lot of boxers would tell you that most of the powers from the punches comes from the legs and it is totally, totally true. The reason why is <clears throat> the power that comes from the legs comes from the pivoting part. So we're going to um, use the pivoting part of our back leg. In my case it's the, uh, the right back leg. So as I pivot my right back leg, which is putting out the cigarette from the floor, it transfers that energy to my knees, now to my uh, hip, my, the right part of my hip, because it turns from the pivot, it forces my hip to naturally, keyword naturally, turn to the front, which then naturally in turn, let my torso, torso turn, 
then let my shoulder turn, which leads me to this motion, or to this motion, or this motion. There's a huge difference with just using the arms because you're just using your upper body, as I said from the first hip rotation video, as opposed to using your hip, especially with a pivoting board. Like so. So again, as I do it in slow motion with the pivoting, it'll be pivoting like stepping on the cigarette from the floor, letting your hip turn, as you can see from the stripes of uh, my pants, like so. So there's a huge difference between just using your arm and doing this. So there's more power, but the same amount of energy that you're using when you're just using the arm. So from that concept, <clears throat> You can also practice not only from this one, but you can also practice in doing the reverse motion, which is doing this. Now this one is like having a baseball bat and trying to wait for the pitch and you're going to hit it with all of your might. But not really using your hands, but you're using your hip as well as the pivoting of your back leg. So it'll be like that. So the concept motion, um, if the concept motion of the first would be this way, the concept motion of the second would be this way. Now, the second part is a bit difficult and a bit dangerous, so I really strongly suggest to really be careful in doing that and to really, really practice that second part really slow because um, <clears throat> some of the reasons would be you might hurt your face accidentally, especially the, your eyes, and if you accidentally whip your towel around here, as you can see, towel might accidentally go to this part and hit your eyes and it's going to be painful and uh, it might leave a mark. <laughs> Second is, you can't hit the back part of, of your waistline here, <clears throat> of your pant. So most likely you're going to hit your back. And it stinks if, if that happens. And so you want to really practice that really, really slowly first. And as you can see, if on the first part you still maintain a guard on your left side if you're uh, right-handed, or on your right side if you're left-handed. The second part lets you uh, naturally put your guard hand down so that you'll be able to do this motion. So, totally different from this to this. And as usual, that's the concept, but the real thing that you want to do is this one. It stinks. <laughs> there. So if you have, if you're not used to the uh, staying part of doing that motion, you may decide not to do that for a while and just do the first part, which I demonstrated a lot. Of. And um, <clears throat> you're still using the hip, but basically you're practicing the uppercut motion or doing the technique motion of doing the techniques that you want to do in martial arts from below going upwards. So doing this slashing motion. So before you're doing this motion is forward or downward, depending on what kind of technique you're trying to imagine to practice. In the second part you're doing this motion. So <clears throat> that's, that's the second part. And um, again, um, if you're not comfortable in doing the second part, I really strongly suggest to do it really, really, really slow. Which is the reason why I show the concept versions, even though some of you might be thinking that the concept versions are lame. But if you really apply martial thinking into it, you'll see the reason why 
you really need to start with the concepts first before applying the martial thinking or the martial training with it. And um, so, there you have it. Um, I hope that you intermediate or advanced users or advanced martial artists out there have learned something from this um, third hip rotation video. And um, I'm sorry that it's not that elaborate, but I do hope that it'll help you <coughs> in the long run and you can make it into one of your uh, workout routines as well, especially uh, in warming up your core. And so uh, thank you very much and um, I hope that this video helped you even in the smallest way possible. God bless you all, always train safe and take care.